Uh, hi guys, yeah, so I'm here with another profile. Uh, today was a weird one, so technically I came first at Locals, however, uh, I was excerpt my last round. Um, the Locals got progressively smaller as the rounds went on until the end about three people dropped final round and then Locals just didn't really exist. Uh, so technically I won, I guess? No, I will admit that. No, because I was everyone with the comments like, oh, you are. First, it's funny. Uh, so yeah, technically I went EXO with uh, Nimble Sprite. Um, I was EXO last round and then everyone kind of dropped. I don't know if that's relevant to like the format as a whole. Obviously, Mama just came out, so I don't know if people just don't want to play um, a Siege U tier mirrors. Um, our locals is normally a pretty big one and then I've, only, I've been away for a few weeks. I've come back and then suddenly it's very small. So yeah, take that as you will. Um, I don't think Sprite is that good anyway, this format. I just played it because it was the only deck I had that was relatively good other than Draco. Um, I'm testing this version instead of the Cyber Sprite. I probably prefer the Cyber Sprite, although this version was actually kind of kind of hot. Um, anyway, guys, yeah, it was just a small locals then. Um, I played against like Bestial branded, some B Trooper stuff and other things. So um, take that as you will. Anyway, we'll just get into the profile and then we'll speed through it. Um, if you're like me and you don't have the Runic cards, you're probably like, how do I play Sprite now? Um, I was playing Cyber Sprite. I've chucked together the Nimble engine because I love Nimble stuff. Go check out the Mift version of my. Um, Basically like pre-Sprite Sprite, before Sprite was a thing, I've made Mift. Um, but for this, obviously we're playing a Sprite card, so three blue, that's standard. Three jet, that's obviously standard. Um, two red, most people play one, I like to play two for ten names, a carrot and a pixies. Pixies always comes up for me. Um, the honest effect is, is really nice when you have to beat over certain cards. Um, so that's a Sprite part of the deck, that's pretty standard, it hasn't changed since like when Sprite was good. Um, new engines, I say new, just re-added engines, obviously I was playing Cyber Sprite to this out. Um, three beaver on summon, summon another nimble from deck, normally get another beaver. Uh, two angler, um, you have to play two because, um, so you normally summon the beaver, summon another nimble, make sprint, sprint, send the angler, you need two um, nimbles in deck to summon off of the angler, so you need to play two angler. Um, which can suck because this can be a brick if you draw it um, without Swap Frog. If you draw it with Swap Frog, you can trigger it that way, so that's kind of nice. Speaking of the Swap Frog, we're playing two. We don't want to play three because this card is now a, a kind of a brick. Um, with no Ronin Toden, it doesn't do anything by itself. You need to um, you need to summon it off of something. I can't speak. Summon off the Gigantic, send itself, and then reborn itself um, using Elf or another Link to that we'll show in a minute. Uh, but yeah, this is the extra engine. This was obviously previously the Cyber Sprite. I think the Cyber Sprite works better just because it gives you that definite interruption. Although with the format of a Shizu tier being tier one, that interruption might not even be that good because it is obviously a pop. Uh, hand traps, three Ash, three Nib, three DD Crow. Um, DD Crow can obviously be any of the um, bestials that have come out. Like I said, I've not really been into Yu-Gi-Oh that much recently, so I haven't picked up the new stuff. Um, the only problem is if you start in your turn, oh, sorry, in their turn, then you can't bist your summon because obviously you can't summon anything other than level two. So the DD Crow can still come up if you don't want to be locked out of your starter or locked out of your DD Crow effectively. Um, spells. Three starter plus one smashes. I was testing two smashes for a while, but we've got a new trap to replace it. Um, starter, starter, smashes. Still really good to form at exiling cards or banishing them. You can tell I've been playing Magic too much. Um, smashes is really nice because obviously, oh, a tier card, get rid of it, banish it. That's really nice. Um, two pot because that's my ratio apparently now. Um, I had a game today where I used pot twice and I went down to two cards and extra deck, still one. That'll be a replay up on the channel later on. It's quite funny. Uh, the Foolish Burial, we're playing this to send the Angler because it's now technically a starter. So you like send Angler, summon two, then you can make Gigantic or you can make like a Sprint uh, and then an Elf or whatever you want to do. So this just gets you two bodies on board now, which is nice. Cool by because cool by, and then a Duster just because we have, so we have some spell trap removal in the main. Traps, uh, the double cross, this is actually really nice. I really like this. Um, it came up a lot against the Bestial branded tier person I played. Um, and it comes up a lot in testing as well. So uh, for those who don't know, it's got three effects. You target a card, your, a monster opponent controls in their grave or field. You can either um, summon it to a zone a link two points to, um, or attach it as a rank two material. That's the one I normally go to. Well, if I like, have a toad on board, I just attach it as the material. And the third one, I can't actually remember. Uh, place the targeted monster your opponent controls in a zone your link two points to and take control of it. Yeah, so it's just a steal. So you summit from your opponent's grave to a zone, steal it from a zone, or attach it as material, which is the one I mainly go for most of the time. Um, so that's kind of nice. 
Uh, other three traps, three imperms to round out our hand traps. So we've got three crow, three nib, three ash, three imperms. So that'd be 12 hand traps in the main. Um, that's a nice ratio that I like. On to the extra deck. This is where things get a bit interesting. Um, three elf. Um, with the grindy engine, or the, the way decks can now be quite grindy, and you're probably going to mill a lot if you're playing against um, tier. I really like playing free elf because obviously your graveyard is now being full being filled up. Yes, as soon as you can shuffle back the stuff you're targeting, so that can be a problem, but as long as you play around that right, uh, you'll be fine. Uh, the new one, Sprint on Summon, send any level two from deck to grave, so you send the angler which summons two beavers or etc. etc. Um, the other effect came up today as well, where if a monster is summoned while well, you have an XYZ with material, you can detach that material to bounce a card your opponent controls. So that did come up. Uh, two gigantic to round up the sprite engine. We all know what this card does by now. It doesn't really get big to be honest anymore of this deck. Uh, the new uh, addition to my version of sprite. Um, some people played this before. This is the other way of making toads. So say if you um, summon swap, send swap, and you have two bodies on board, you can bounce the swap link into this and then this effect will trigger to summon the swap from grave and the swap from your hand and make toad that way. So it's kind of a jankier way to ensure that you get toad if you don't have enough to make elf or you run out of elf or if you want to keep elf for other things. Um, in reality if you have swap plus two bodies you can just make elf and then elf summon back the, the other swap and make toad that way. Um, this does mean that they can't, um, there's no stop in between having two swaps on board. So if you go like elf target swap, they then can't be like, okay, uh, branded beast pop one of your swaps. Um, so they have to pop this. It, just, it forces that early, I guess. It's kind of nice. Um, also means you can keep your elf for everything. So say if you're late game, um, you can be like elf summon back, la 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 la. And then later on be like, Boop, okay, now I'll make another toad that way. Um, it's okay, it's great-ish, I guess. Uh, one dark, just to snipe things up in his grave, because obviously Mestek in the format is now dark. Um, Unicorn for problems. Borosol, Borosol is really nice, um, because obviously previously Elf says you can't, it can't be used as link material. Uh, any two monsters now makes a Boros Sword because you can go level twos into Sprint, Sprint and Angler, summon two, make a Boros Sword. Um, which did come up today for me, that's really nice. I like having an OTK potential again in Sprite. Uh, Toad, it's Toad, you can use this to add back the Beaver. Beaver doesn't save from deck, it says from deck or grave, so you can recycle a level two engine that way. Omnibaru got a rarity upgrade. So we're playing that in, in Ultra. Uh, Sky Camp into Download into Zeus for your uh, going second plan. I feel the deck is actually kind of nice um, on it in a, in a vacuum. Like, it's got a lot of good cards. It's still very, very um, consistent. Uh, however, with the new format, it just doesn't really have a place, unfortunately, uh, unless you're playing like the Runic version, which potentially can be the best. I'm still going to play it. I'm not going to buy tier or, or bestial i'm gonna play this and i'll see how we do the whole time side deck two twin two cosmic um free mine because we have to have a backup plan uh one pank because you draw it going second one resonator for life points three evenly um tier don't really make that many negates so you can drop an evenly on them that's kind of nice and then this was normally an anti-spell um, so this would normally be anti-spell to stop things like Dark Ruler and Super Poly and stuff going second. But against Tier, if you drop this going game three, you're most likely going to win because if they play, it's like Maxi, if they play, you're going to get out the win because it turns so long and they summon so much, you're probably going to win that game um, if you play in two time. It's not a very fun way to play. Don't recommend it. Obviously, don't stall. Play normally. But if your game ends up going into time, then this will should hopefully get you the win because you'll be like 8k above them if they play out their full combo. Um, the other day I dropped this at another locals against, uh, I can't remember what deck, but I ended up going to like 36k. I can't remember what they were playing. Um, the highest I've got playing this was in 2018 versus Dragon Link, I got to 40,000, which is kind of nice. Um, yeah, so it's all right. Again, if you're playing like a mainstream deck, it should just be anti-spell to stop those Dark Ruler go second blowout cards. Anyway guys, that was my uh, nimble sprite deck profile. Um, again, I technically went EXO first place at Locals through an amount of rounds that may or may not have existed. Um, I'm gonna play this deck on for the next couple of weeks as well. So there will be some profiles coming up, hopefully of like bigger events if I make some minor changes. Um, and there will be some replays coming up soon as well with this deck in action. Anyway guys, thank you for watching, goodbye.